Hey everyone, welcome back to FinTech. In this video, I'm going to be covering Fastly's recent release of their preliminary quarter three results and what that means for the stock. I'm going to be covering some background on Fastly as a company, what their recent release showed, and how I think this is going to affect the stock price going forward. Lastly, stick around until the end of the video to figure out what trades I have made based on their new updated guidance. So let's start with some background on Fastly as a company. Founded in 2011 by Artur Bergman, Fastly was originally designed as a content delivery network. He had set out to build a better CDN based on his experience at a site hosting company. Fastly had some great success early on, quickly capturing customers for its CDN ranging from Twitch to GitHub to Google. But over time, Fastly realized there was a much bigger opportunity than just hosting web content. They could use their existing infrastructure to host computing at the edge, which could basically be applied to doing anything from doing computing for IoT devices to supporting driverless cars. Basically any kind of computing that can benefit from near millisecond latency would benefit from edge computing. More recently, Fastly has begun making aggressive moves into security as evidenced by its recent acquisition of Signal Sciences. In fact, it was this acquisition that required Fastly to release these preliminary earnings in the first place. One of Fastly's biggest competitors is a very similar company which also offers edge computing, CDNs, and security. That company is called Cloudflare. Now I made a previous video comparing Fastly to Cloudflare and how I thought each of the companies performed relative to each other. At the end of that video, I concluded that at this point in time, the competition between Fastly and Cloudflare was just too close and I couldn't really declare a winner right away. As we'll see a little bit later in this video, that conclusion has changed somewhat. So now let's jump into the numbers that Fastly released for their quarter two earnings back in August. Last quarter, Fastly reported top line revenue of $75 million, or a 62% increase year over year. Also in that earnings announcement, Fastly essentially guided for no growth in Q3 in order to reach a 50% revenue growth for the entire year. Their dollar-based net expansion rate was 137%, up from 133% just a quarter ago. This means that Fastly's existing customers, for every $1 they spend, Fastly can expect them to spend 37 cents more in the future. Fastly also experienced the biggest growth that it had ever had in its number of customers this quarter, with their enterprise customers increasing from two 297 to 304. Enterprise customers also generated 88% of their trailing 12-month revenue. They also increased their gap gross margins to 60.2%, up from 55% in the same quarter in 2019. Similarly, their non-gap gross margins, which are basically their gross margins if you take out the stock-based compensation, were 61.7% up from 55.6% a year ago. They forecast their revenue for the entire year to be $300 million, which would be a growth rate of around 50% from the previous year. The last major announcement in their last quarter earnings was the fact that TikTok was their largest customer and made up 12% of their revenue, with half of that coming from the United States. Now that revenue was at risk because there was some regulatory scrutiny over TikTok and it wasn't clear whether or not the app was going to get completely banned in the US or not. Those numbers look pretty good, with the only concerning part being that Fastly was essentially guiding for no growth between quarter two and quarter three, based on the fact that they only expected revenue to grow 50% for the entire year. Now investors clearly really weren't too impressed with that report because between that and the fact that TikTok was facing some regulatory scrutiny in the US and India, the stock remained essentially flat or a little bit down over the next several months. That is until the start of October when it seemed more likely that TikTok was actually not going to get banned in the US and Fastly stock price shot up 30%, only to be knocked down again by about 30% once they released these new preliminary earnings. So that's some background on the stock. But what were these earnings they released that resulted in the stock price dropping so dramatically? Because Fastly was acquiring Signal Sciences, they were required to release their preliminary Q3 revenue growth earlier than their actual Q3 earnings announcement. Those preliminary results showed that rather than reaching the expected 73.5 to $75.5 million in revenue, they were actually going to show around 70 to $71 million in revenue for the quarter. They blamed this drop in revenue on two different factors. The first was that TikTok was spending less on their platform due to the scrutiny was facing in the US and India. The second factor was that during the latter part of the quarter, several of Fastly's customers had lower usage than Fastly was initially estimating. So let's unpack that announcement. Now the first factor, that TikTok was spending less on their platform, we kind of expected that. We knew that TikTok was facing a potential ban in the US and we knew that that would affect Fastly's revenue in the short term. But then there's the second factor, that several of Fastly's customers were experiencing lower usage on the platform than what Fastly was expecting. 
That is a little bit more concerning. Our whole story around Fastly is that it's essential to businesses and they have best in class products which help customers make more money than they actually cost them. But if that were true, why would existing customers not spend more on Fastly every quarter? Those customers should be using Fastly and its new services more and more every single year if Fastly's services do in fact make them more money than they cost them. So what then do I expect from the stock in both the short term and the long term? Well, first, let's look at what I think the stock is going to do over the next quarter or two. First off, I think it's actually very possible that Fastly is going to have a better than expected quarter three. The reason for this is Fastly's existing guidance already has all the headwinds facing TikTok built into their projections. Now, if these headwinds end up not panning out like it seems like they are right now, that guidance is going to be a little conservative because TikTok is going to be spending more than expected. This thought is bolstered by the fact that Fastly's leadership did say that they were being conservative in their guidance during their preliminary release. Additionally, Fastly expects their growth between Q3 and Q4 to be around 18%. Now this is the exact same growth that they had last year between Q3 and Q4. Now this growth seems to be a little bit conservative because most people are expecting that this year's Black Friday, as well as just the holiday shopping season in general, is going to be much more heavily online than in any previous year due to restrictions on retail shopping. This is going to be a huge advantage to Fastly because their customers are going to be more reliant than ever on their infrastructure. This means that we may actually see a little bit of revenue beat next quarter. But what about longer term? When I invest, I like to focus on a much longer term time horizon than just one or two quarters. So what will I personally be doing with my shares? Well, first I have to look at my reasons for owning Fastly in the first place. I wanted to own Fastly because it was an incredibly fast growing company with an excellent product whose customers seem to love it so much that they spent more on it every single year than they were the year before. Now, however, if you look at how many enterprise customers they've been adding over the last quarter, it averages out to around two new enterprise customers per month. And remember, 88% of Fastly's revenue comes from their enterprise clients. This is a stock that's supposed to be growing revenue at 60% per year. And to me, this clearly does not seem to be the case anymore. But you might say, look at the stock price. It's already dropped 25%. So isn't it a bargain at this point? Well, if you look at Fastly's stock price just one month ago, it was around the same level then as it is right now. And a month ago is when I first made the comparison between Fastly and Cloudflare. And at that time, I said it was too hard to tell whether Fastly or Cloudflare was going to be a better better performing company in the long term. So my plan was just to wait and see which company ended up performing better. Well, I think that I have the answer to that now. While Fastly only added two enterprise customers on average per month, Cloudflare added 27. This is more than just Fastly's biggest customer cutting some of their spending on the platform. This is Fastly fundamentally failing to perform up to the standards that they had set beforehand. Now, don't get me wrong. Would I rather own Fastly than keeping my money in cash? Well, yes, I don't think Fastly is gonna go down, but the question is when you're investing in stocks, what is the opportunity cost of staying invested in one company versus another? If I were to keep all my money in Fastly, I would be missing out on the opportunity to invest in an incredibly fast growing company with a proven leadership team with really excellent products that their customers love, Cloudflare. So based on all of this, I have sold all 99 shares that I held of Fastly, and I've moved the majority of that money into a Cloudflare investment instead. I'll provide some more information on this during my October stock portfolio review, which will come out the first week of November. So what about you? Have you bought more Fastly to capitalize on the fact that its shares are discounted now versus two weeks ago? Or have you, like me, just lost faith in the company and sold out completely? Let me know in the comments. I read and respond to pretty much all of them. With that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. And if you don't want to miss out on any future videos, make sure to both subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'll see you next time.